Hey, welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we have just made a pretty worrying discovery, and that discovery is that we wrecked our car, but on the bright side, we got our badge back, so there's something good come of all this. Footprints in the snow leading away from the accident. Oh yeah, a thought? Seems the walker was either very confused or drunk out of his mind. I'm kind of voting both, honestly. There's a boat tucked away under the tarpaulin cover. Great news, the boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in a supine position. Uh, wait, what would I be doing under there? I don't know, sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Great news, I found somewhere new to sleep. Huh? I can pretty much finish the case from under that boat there. It's dry, waterproof, and free of charge. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. Think of it as a salvation. You have a home somewhere, all cops do. Once it's done, you can return. Yeah, that doesn't help with my 20 real per day issue. Uh, what's going on over here? We've got... A, we look in a window before going in there? Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. All right. Yep, there's a, a chair. Just as said. You see a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. It's only a red chair. Just a red chair in an empty shack with what looked like a dusty bow tie on the shelf. Nothing you see here, right? Sounds like we need to investigate it then. Investigate the blood red chair? You're going to leave it alone, Harry. That's what you're going to do, says Inland Empire. Really interesting. Take a postcard and... A bow tie that gives me some drama. Whoop, oh, oh, oh. I've been having a lot of pop-up orbs and I keep missing them. Okay, so we can get it back. Okay, there it is. A cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak. Okay, not worth it. Alright, what else we got around here? There's a box here. With a jug. Um, there might be more stuff on the beach to check out, actually, but let's go. Uh, we'll keep going this way. Another one of these. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrum. A washboard scrums? Fil oh, a washboard scrums filled from the... I think it was a tablet, but I was too confused what was going on. Um, people to talk to. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through, so I can't actually talk to them from here. What's up with this? Uh... Cinder blocks charred, a makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. And sit there. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Huh. Lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we saw the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Well, that doesn't seem to be something I need right now. Okay. So, can we get in here? We can. Um, some trousers gives me extra kingdom of conscience, but did I even do kingdom of conscience? Like, I don't think... Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not one that I ever, um, tried to grab. And it gives me a minus two to half light, which I don't really care that much about, but... Anyway, whatever, okay. You just see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Uh, it says, Ales Vosen, which I don't know what it means. White curtains have been drawn shut, no looking in. A wedding stone, well worn and covered in rust. Uh, 65 real pennies. Construction material. Whoever planned to build his house left in a hurry. And some magnesium and some money. Okay, what is this up here? The street sign is illegible below the graffito. All right, ma'am. I think it was a ma'am. Looks like a ma'am. The woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd me melody. Her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be South Samaritan, possibly Sa uh, Sagayan, also known as the Apricot Suzerainty. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. 
I have cataracts. All right, leaning closer. But how does she know you're here? If you can't see, how do you know I was here? I still have a golden ear. Come, come. She beckons you towards her. Well, yeah, lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. Very good of you. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Trouble? To the second thing, Breton shows you got style. I'm not... Whatever the horrific necktie says is obviously a bad idea, so we do the opposite. What he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Which you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. So wait, have I been here before? No, not you personally. I meant the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was brooding, needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. Good for us. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. So, what kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. Oh, that sounds pretty disco. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. If I'm considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me that? Maybe they are afraid. Well, why? Because you're an ill omen. <laughs> but you're still welcome here, as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've been. <laughs> I like you, washerwoman. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park your motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Okay. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Um, she waves her hand. Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Because she's blind, which you seem to have forgotten. Okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? This is my little cinder block town. She nods with a wrinkled smile. I know what goes on around here. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez, he points east. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? She turns to him. I don't know how this world works, and it doesn't work well when people tell on each other. Um, this is like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. No, it's not like that man. With him, we called you. Like a raven plucking at the window glass. I see. You know something, but you decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. Lieutenant turns to you. I hope you don't mind if you look around anyway. Ruby was here. You know it. Where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. How much is it? I won't charge it you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Um, wait, hold on. You're just giving it to me. No one is using it, and God knows it's not much anyway. She tilts her head on the side, pondering over something. You can stay there. I mean, yeah. Well, I will say this. There's a guy guard who makes me give him money every night just so I don't die out in the cold. Hmm, that's exactly how they get you. That's why we built our own cinder block houses on the seaside. So we don't have to give money to those crooks. She looks around. They might not like much, but they're, look like much, but they're ours. Uh, you got yourself a tenant. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Oh, poor washerwoman, you certainly will. You most certainly will. Well, if you're not in the hostel in the morning, I know where to find you. He looks around and adds, here, in a shack. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Should he? This environment encourages one thing and one thing only. Drinking. Finally, you have those Lamos of Martinez off your backs, Breton. This looks like a great place to bring chicks. 
Yes, I am sure that this shack is a total chick magnet. A love shack, as it were. All right, what is in this fishing village? Just us. She sounds tired. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place, she grins. A gap, a blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. Um, well, who else lives in this uh, village? Well, there's Lilen and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. She nods her head across the courtyard. But they're away right now. And then there's the drunks, she sighs. Not a pretty sight, but as little even we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Well, what drunks? Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself, she surely slowly shakes her head. Don't have to look long to find these guys. I wonder if it's the guys we saw over here to the left. Um, there's going to be something here. Tell me. She waves her hand southwest. Over there, you can find more of the same. Sh uh, shacks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. Well, the pox, what's that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. She looks towards the building to the south. Or it used to be during the times of this su suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell-shocked veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinderblock houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. She tightens a scarf on her neck. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Well, is there a way to make a little money around here? Here? For you? She lets out a dry cordial. No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins that drunks get tied hiding from their women and then forgot about. Well, all right. Their topic I'd like to, to address. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. What's further down the coast? Not much, she replies and wipes her forehead. There's the abandoned church, the DeLorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time even. Well, why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. She smiles a gap to smile and smells the air. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So they don't hold services there anymore, the Ecclesiastes? No, they've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. She frowns. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. I get the feeling you're leaving stuff out. What else is going on? Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea, she scoffs. It started a few days ago, and now it's blasting even through the nights. And now suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. I don't like that. Ooh, it sounds like a mystery to me. Interesting. You could look into this ruckus if you have the time. Uh, perhaps the mysterious music is somewhat connected to the case of a salka or a half-demonic aspara singing. Well, what else is down the coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex or some kind of electrical plant, a run-down bunch of houses, empty. Uh, which is it then? Apartments or electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. She shrugs. Before the war, I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The, the old fish market up on the boardwalk, but it's closed. Uh, that's it. I don't even moral on the coast. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans. If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Land's End. Used to be a supply depot, we think. Sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut, though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. Nothing is impossible, surely. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. Well, tell me about yourself. Who are, exactly are you? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isobel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Like Isobel Sadie? Or does your first name change when you get married? Now it's your turn, mister. <laughs> My name is Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Lieutenant Double Yetter for Harrier Dubois, or call me Harry. Yeah, call me Harry. Why, I guess I will, Harry. Aye, it just rolls off the tongue. I used to know a Harry. Strong lad, but dumb as a rock. What happened to him? He joined the police, clearly. 
he did too many narcotics, so he spell off his boat and split his skull on a buoy. She rubs soap off her hands. Folks who saw it say his head cracked open like a melon. Nasty, nasty. Okay, do I want to get her signature or not? Her name is uh, Isobel Sadie, so I'll say goodbye. I'm off for now. Let me just check really quick. Um, two signatures for... Oh yeah, Isobel and Leanne are the ones they he wants me to get to sign. And I'm trying to find someone else to sign it so that it won't it won't go down. So that's where I am right now. Um, is this my new abode? Actually, hold on. Let's look in the window first. You can't see in the house from this angle. Inside, they hear you hear, so you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. Check it out. Ah, uh, never mind. We'll come back here when it's late. Okay, so down this way are what we th I think are probably the drunks. Hard to see the details. The colors all warm and welcoming are cozy, though. This one we can go in. Okay, is this uh, Sadie's? I'm not going to steal somebody's taxidermy. That's terrible. Who are you, little boy? Oh, little girl. Hello, mister! A young girl, barely four... F four... F four or five? Like, like, barely four or five years old? Like, read it like that? Okay. Got it, director. A young girl, barely four, maybe five years old, sits on the sofa. She is looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Ooh, she was long. I had gloves, very big ones, heavy too. Where'd you get these gloves? I found them when Lambie and I were playing hide and seek in an empty house where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. Interesting. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. Where are the gloves now? She pouts. I hid them. The twins were to take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into one of its, its one remaining eyes, while searching for confirmation. We're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Ooh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sand castle, she points out somewhere outside, behind our house, under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. Do you know anyone named Ruby? Luby, Luby. Suddenly the girl gets all serious and leans in, as if she's about to tell you a secret. My mom tells me that I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can say lul, or like something I can, but then yee, yee, rrr, yee. Kids, the tenant shakes his head. Where are your parents? My mom's outside, and I don't really know about my dad. She gives you a bright smile like it's a good thing. What's that? Point at the stuffed bird hanging from the ceiling. It's a grouse, she yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on guard's good side if you make up for the uh, school you broke. Yes, but what's it for? I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Um, sure, just go and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. All right. I'm going to grab it from the ceiling and go. All right, we'll figure this out. What are you holding? It's Lambie. He's my friend, sort of, like... She holds up the fuzzy beast to demonstrate. Lambie is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing and the fur is tattered in several parts. Lambie looks soft. Yes, very soft. So at least she pushes the stuffed animal towards your face. Press your cheek against Lambie. Uh, isn't he soft? She's right. Lambie is very soft. She rubs the white fur against your cheek, then returns to Lambie into her lap, cuddling it. Okay. Um, well, goodbye. Bye. The girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. All right, what's the fireplace crackling? Industrial coal pellets burned with an orange glow. All right, she said we could grab it, so take it. All right. Don't know if uh, Gart would care for that or not, but I wouldn't mind getting back on his good side. All right, what do we got here? A flower trough where nothing really grows, maybe in spring. Some kids out here to talk to? Hey, guys. Oh, these are the twins. Um, a scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. Kids, have you seen any bad people around? One of the twins look up, his mouth slowly open. What bad people, he asks. I don't think questioning four-year-olds without their parents present is going to crack the case, says the lieutenant. Hey, where's your mom? The kid has a reply, absorbed in his little game. Is little Lily your sister? Point of the house. Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys look identical. The Tsongi one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact you just stated. Uh, other one said, he just, just looks just like me, the other one says. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws in the rock. Both their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids, the lieutenant remarks with evident glee. And what are you, kid master general? Maybe I am, he grins. Now how about some actual police work? We're not getting anything out of here. All right, bye kids. Take care. All right, well, let's go grab those shoes. Or not, yeah, the gloves, I mean, not shoes. Uh, well, there's not been kind Lily Sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. Uh, you can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Broken. The little castle? Lieutenant smiles a little. The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it slip into such decrepitude. So reach into the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. All right. Fairweather T500 gauntlets. The fall walls and floor give way to a giant's greed, collapse and, pre collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations, that's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. All right, let's check these things out though. Plus two to interfacing. It's even better. Yeah, check out those gauntlets. I'm an interfacing machine. As you fold your fingers into a fist, you realize you can knock anyone out with one punch. The white ceramic gloves wrap around your digits comfortably. So should I go back to, uh, to, um, the dude with the tattoos on his head? A measure head? Your movements cause little tiny clicks like dice rolling somewhere far away as the plates reorient to your motions. I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. Haha, <laughs> yeah, right. The hardened, vitreous enamel, and once sleek and voluptuous, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. You really do feel more confident. Invulnerability does that. Even partial invulnerability. Um, I mean, one down two pieces ago, or this gear could line my pockets with cash, or this is the long sought after enemy technology. I can't just enjoy it. I must study it. I can study it. So remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it, observe its properties, see if there's a weakness in the design. For the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. Oh, that's interesting. I think I will. I have two points and I'm like almost halfway to another one. Let's unlock this. And then I want to um, study to lose a, a saver for while I'm doing this, but I want to study this uh, armor. It's just the kind of cop I am. Now, we never did come back this way and talk to the people we thought were probably drunks. Okay, another bottle. All right, you guys, all drunked up. Oh, good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? He spreads his arms as if wanting to embrace you. Yeah. Does he actually know you, or just shopkeeper friendly? What are you talking about? So what do you want? I got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got Pilsner. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. Also, I have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. Okay, wow. Bratushka. You feel your necktie strangle you with excitement. That's the spirit. It's by the spirit. 300 real is a lot, but it has to be done. It's our end game. This is another stupid drunk idea I'm having. I'm attributing to my necktie. Or what if I don't listen to my necktie anymore? Yeah, I don't want to. Snap out of it, Bratan. This is no time for that melancholy introspection. It's time to buy that spirit. Another stupid drunk idea I'm having. I'm attributing to my necktie. No. Bratan, you don't understand. It's not another drink. This is what our relationship has been building towards all these years. This is the climax, the mystery, the virginal sigh. New task, spirit eternal. You have to buy it from him. Get it off him. Kill him if you have to. Our ultimate fate depends on it and the fate of many worlds. Shut up, necktie. Lieutenant looks at you, looking at the bottle of spirit, then at Rosemary suspiciously. I'm not going to buy the freaking necktie. Or, I mean, anyway. He knows something's going on in your head. Why does the bottle of spirits cost 300 real? 
See, friend, he brings out a one liter bottle with his bluish liquid. The mouth is corked shut. It's real valuable. Worth every real if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Nod, let him speak. You know, it's funny, actually. He bursts out laughing and takes three gulps of his pilsner and stares at you intently. He's funny and difficult to focus his swattery out gaze. What is? Uh, what? What do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? This guy, this guy, he says, and he shakes his index finger at you. Where'd you get the bottle of spirits from? Oh, this medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. You ain't shouldn't you. Her medicinal spirits are a blast, Breton. The flame and truth is joke of a world. I got one of those scientific ampoules a month ago. Torpedo, they call it. Supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. He spits a nasty little clot to the ground before you. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. His voice from the pride. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. It sounds dangerous. It was, he croaks. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of hell. Fine, the missus took me to a private doctor's office, not a charity, the real thing. Those assholes. He gets visibly angry. Those assholes tell me four reals to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top. Okay, how? The idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead thingies. He gets an excited gleam in his eye. Swipe three candid blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila! What's love this beautiful blue stuff? He shakes the bottle. 98.7, almost pure alcohol. This is like drinking rubbing alcohol. Two, I already sold to those fine gentlemen here, he nods companions. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. <laughs> Don't say it. Oh my gosh. I mean, if I buy it, will I be able to not drink it? Uh, I think it'll prove useful, yeah. Three real is yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. Well done, you got it. Alright. That's a much more reasonable price there. It makes sense now. Alright. I'll buy that. Let's so make sure to enjoy that one, friend. Pretend I'm so proud now. What if you don't drink it? Deserves so much more than just regular oral consumption. Huh. What do you want? Like an enema? Just wait for my sign. Keep it with you. Keep it warm. Keep it safe. Soon we'll enter the other world. Soon the time will come soon. Have patience, brave one. All right. Well, I... What the... I'm off. I'm just... I'm off. In the civilized world, it's a custom a tip to shop. Keep friend, but come back anyway. He waves you off. All right. Can I talk to this guy? The legend, he's back and thirsty. No, it's I think they're all the same. Hey, oh. Takeda! A 30-something man clad in a two-piece Lacara tracksuit puts on his pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see ya! As business, as the old reality situation treating ya. That's interesting he said that. I'm gonna shake his hand. So what's happening? Uh wait, tequila? Yeah, tequila sunset. How are the um High concept reality based adventures proceeding. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I just, ha is this whole thing just like a drunk thing and he's, I'm out of it for a second. He's talking. That's what it sounds like. He says it's like, it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the fourth street gang. Good. These people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. I like this guy. You should, you should too. He respects you by calling you your true name. I have re-entered reality to conquer it, to bend it to my will. I am the law. That's the spirit I used to shape reality into my image a long time ago, but these days are over now. He looks at his shit-stained Lycra TM jacket with a grim expression. Sadly, things ain't going that well in idiot doom spiral land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. Take a sip from his beer. Idiot Doom Sparrow, huh? This is bound to be a good high sub concept conversation at last. Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around here lately? Yeah, like they're giving me any information. Can't really remember seeing any woman after losing my keys. He really has no idea who this Ruby is, sire. What do you guys do around here? We are saving the world. Looks at his comrades. Please, please don't, don't, don't call, don't call, begs the man, man of the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once a long time ago with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. So now it's a pirate's life for me. Could you and your pals sign this document? 
What's it about? He waves his hand up and says, ah, I'll let my hand address the situation. Maybe you heard I used to be a very successful businessman. I signed more than a few leases of forms, whatever they fuck they were. He looks around. And we got a pen. The pro is going to do it. I have his blue oblong pen. All right. He grabs a pen and paper and carefully scribbles this dotted line next to Leanne's signature, Idiot Doom Spiral. I need at least two signatures in the document. Hey, Abs! He shuts the mumbling trucker next to him. Hey, Abs! The man looks around and says, Don't you, you call Abigail. I need you to sign this document right here. He waves the paper and pen in front of the man's face. It's important. Don't call her. His trembling hand catches the paperwork. He lays it on his knee and starts writing slowly. The handwriting is almost illegible due to his shaky hands. His friend grabs the document and admires it. Don't uh, call Abigail. Great job, Abs. Nailed it. He hands it back to him. Can I have the pen back too? Don't know if I mention it. We used to be a businessman and as a businessman, I'm going to keep the pen for my trouble. He nods confidently. Whatever. <laughs> no, that's my favorite thing of all the things you have. My favorite is the gun he lost as hand-eye coordination. Uh, you've done a great service to the village, the RCM, and to Revishal. Hey, guys, we're heroes. He raises his hand erratically to the other guys. About fucking time, man. I've done my duty. He brings his hand up to his head for a salute. Don't call Ab Don't call Abigail! He snorts, takes a swig from his bottle. The bottle is empty. Thank you for your service, gentlemen. He turns to you. Should we go and mail this? I think I saw a mailbox bo on Plaza. Mailbox? Plaza? Got it. And we leave. Well, that was an autosave. And I think probably a really good time to uh, take a little break here. So we'll see you back in Revishal soon. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.